This is the HyperX Pulsefire Core, a $30 entry-level budget gaming mouse that still manages to pack in some pretty decent features at this entry-level price point. Let's check it out. Everything comes all packaged up in one of HyperX's standard gaming mouse boxes. Inside you'll find a support contact card, a small quick start guide, and the Pulsefire Core with some protective plastic film to help keep it from getting scratched during shipping. The build quality is really solid for an entry level gaming mouse. I couldn't get it to bend or flex or creak or make any unwanted sounds or anything like that. It seems like HyperX made it just as well as their higher end gaming mice. And that's a really nice bonus for people looking at a budget friendly entry level gaming mouse. The top shell has a smooth matte black finish and it's actually pretty grippy despite not having any texture. Around that there's a glossy reflective border that looks nice but unfortunately it's really prone to fingerprints and showing dirt. And the sides have a grooved wavy pattern that do a pretty good job at improving the overall grip. Now HyperX went for a symmetrical design with this one, but that doesn't mean that it's ambidextrous. You're only gonna find the side buttons on the left side, and that means left-handed users are kinda gonna be out of luck with this one. The dimensions are 120 millimeters long, 42 millimeters high, and 64 millimeters wide. The maximum height occurs towards the back, and that forms a pretty big and pronounced hump. This results in a shape that's awesome for palm gripping, and claw grips work too, but the only thing you gotta keep in mind with the claw grip is that sometimes the back of the mouse will come in contact with the palm of your hand, and some users might find that a little bit uncomfortable. I have medium sized hands, and I did feel like I was able to adapt to the mouse using a claw grip without too much trouble. The weight comes in around 90 grams, and as far as I'm concerned, that's kind of a middle ground type of weight. It's not in that ultra lightweight category that's really popular right now in 2020, but at the same time, it's not so heavy that it feels like you're trying to move a brick across your desk or something crazy like that. There's a total of seven programmable buttons, and they all provide nice, crisp, tactile feedback. The scroll wheel's really grippy, it's got a nice rubber texture to it, and it's pretty quiet, and it also functions as one of the seven buttons by pressing directly down on it. The primary left and right buttons feel smooth, crisp, and responsive, and it's really easy to tell when you've registered a click and when you didn't. And at the same time, they seem to be a little bit on the firm side in terms of actuation force, and HyperX rates them for up to 20 million clicks in terms of durability. Underneath, there's two massive low friction feet at the front and the back to help keep things smooth and gliding around, and they work really well. The mouse feels buttery smooth when you're making mouse movements on a cloth gaming surface and even on hard surfaces as well. Tracking's done with a Pixart 3327 6200 DPI optical gaming sensor with a polling rate of 1000 Hz and a maximum speed of 220 inches per second. Overall, it's a good performing sensor with decent specs, and it should be good enough for most gamers. When considering a wired gaming mouse, I always like to look at the type of wire that it has and how flexible it's going to be. With the Pulsefire Core, we get a nice quality braided cable, and that's another feature that's really awesome to see at this budget-friendly entry-level price point. It's 1.8 meters long and decently flexible, but it doesn't seem to straighten itself out all that easily, and it's definitely not as good as some of the high-performance cables that we see on high-end wired gaming mice. And because of that, I recommend using a bungee with this mouse just to make sure that the cable's not going to get caught up on anything that might be on your desk that's in the way, like a monitor stand or whatever else that you might have there. With gaming mice, it all comes down to the gaming experience, and with the Pulsefire Core, I'm actually impressed. It feels pretty light and quick, even though it's around 90 grams, and I'm sure those extra large feet have something to do with that. The shape feels comfortable. I didn't get cramped fingers or fatigue in my hand, even though it has that big hump towards the back and I was using a claw grip. In first-person shooter games, I use a low sensitivity that forces me to lift up the mouse and reposition it after making big mouse movements, and that didn't seem to be a problem with the Pulsefire Core, so that means the liftoff distance seems to work pretty well for this style of low sensitivity gameplay. HyperX also included an onboard memory profile so that you can save your settings right to the device, and 16.8 million color configurable RGB backlighting. All this stuff and the sensor configuration is done through HyperX's Ingenuity software. You can set different lighting effects by selecting presets and then customizing colors and other settings. You can reassign different functions to the seven buttons and also fine tune the DPI. This software will also support some of HyperX's other products as well, so if you have a keyboard or some other compatible device, you should be able to control that right here. HyperX is really giving us a lot to like with the Pulsefire Core. It's got a good performing sensor, a solid build, programmable buttons, and RGB backlighting. And I think that makes it a really competitive and compelling option at this budget-friendly entry-level tier of gaming mice. And I mean, it sells for 30 US dollars, but I've seen it on sale for around 25 to 27 dollars. And at that price point, like that's a really good price to performance ratio. I think this is a really good option for people that are in the market for a gaming mouse at that price point. So make sure you check this one out 
out. I'm going to put the purchasing links down in the description. If you pick one up, leave us a comment and let us know what you think about it. And uh, give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. See ya.